Make my life a prayer to you. I want to do what you want me to. No empty words and no white lies. No token prayers, no compromise. Good morning. I hope it's going well with you today. I hope you are able to walk with God with your hand in His hand. And if your days are darker than most other people's days and you are struggling with things that other people are not struggling with, I hope you find your solace in God. I hope you find your strength in the Spirit. And I hope you are busy and growing and, and in the Lord and strengthening yourself for the days that are ahead. So let's just go to the Lord in prayer. It is He who remembered us in our low estate. For his steadfast love endures forever, and rescued us from our foes, for his steadfast love endures forever. He who gives food to all flesh, for his steadfast love endures forever. And yes, Father, we thank you that we can come and stand before this God today, that you are this God. Your steadfast love endures forever. And thank you, Lord, that that is a truth that's been true through all the ages, Lord. Whether we are in times of prosperity, whether we're in times when things go well, um, or whether we are walking um, in difficult times, whether we are sitting by the streams of living water, and whether we are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, this truth remains, Lord. Your steadfast love endures forever. And so, Lord, we want to pray. We want to pray as we go into your word today that you will open our eyes again to why we are here. Lord, let us not miss that point. Let us not waste our time. Let us not waste our lives, Lord, but that we hear your voice for our purpose. Lord, thank you that your voice comes with love and comes with power and comes with kindness and comes with comfort, Lord. You don't send us out before you haven't done the work in us first. And so this morning we want to sit at your feet now, Lord. Lord, I want to pray for those who bring heavy burdens from this past week, Lord, that they can place it at your feet, Lord, and to know that you are good and that you are God, and that you are still in charge. And so, Lord, speak to us this morning, we pray in your wonderful name. Amen. We are carrying on in our lessons from lockdown as we want to learn God's truths for times of difficulty. And that's what Paul is writing to um, the Philippians in his time of difficulty as he's sitting in prison in Rome. One thing I've, re I've picked up in, in the last months as people are dealing with the pandemic, is always this question about when are we going back to normal? When can all of this be behind us now so we can go back to how life used to be? Now we need to be honest with ourselves and, and honest with what the Bible says about how the world will play out, that we might never go back to normal. We might never go back to how things used to be. And this, as I've preached a couple of weeks back, this might be the start of the end. Um, this might be how it will go and it will get worse and worse until Jesus comes again. And so we must be very careful that we don't spend all our energy and our focus on going back. But that we need to spend our time and our focus on God's word and to know how to move forward. In spite of what happens. Whether this goes past and we do return to a type of normal. Or whether this is now the end that takes us to, to Christ's return. And for that purpose, these lessons from Paul is so important. They're not just important for people who are living in the end. They are important for everyone through all the ages. But they definitely do apply to people walking into this time, into these last days. And it's a great outward focus that is called on us. And so, um, the end will catch many people off guard. This, these times, and if it gets worse, they're going to catch many people off guard because they desire comfort. That is what they've been preached and heard for so many years. That just come to Jesus and your life will be nice and easy. They must have never read books like Revelation. And so we as Christians need to be ready for both. We need to be ready for if this is the end. And we need to be ready for if this is just another warning from God to get ourselves ready, because the end will come. And so today we want to carry on in Philippians, and the lesson for today is show genuine concern. Show genuine concern. If you follow the line so far that Paul has been teaching them and, and, and writing to them about, it's about how you need to live. You look at your life. 
God cares how you live. And, and we're in a line where he's talking about there's a life of obedience that is required of true believers. A life that is committed to God. And what is this obedience? It's simply the law of God. You have to love God with everything. And you have to love your neighbor, those that God has placed around you. And so last week, Paul used himself as an example of saying, I'm not just telling you to live like this. Look, I'm already living like this. I'm already willing to give up my life if it's going to be to the benefit of you and the benefit of the gospel. And so today he's carrying on and he's using Timothy's example. And that is also very important for us that he's doing this. Because otherwise we could fall into the misconception that this difficult life, this life of total radical obedience, of giving it all to God, are for the guys at the top. They are for the Pauls, because man, they are so amazing. We're just a normal Christian. So we'll do Sunday, we'll do every now and then. But this is not our life calling. And Paul, like last week he did as well, he invites them in. He's saying, this is not just for me. This is not just for Timothy. This is for all of you. So still be at this church. This is for you. This life that Paul is talking about is for us. We need to follow and listen as well. So you can open your Bibles to Philippians 2. We're going to read there from verse 19 to verse 24. Philippians 2 from verse 19 to 24. This morning, Debbie will be reading for us. So let's, let's just pray before we read together. Yes, Father, we come to your word as people who cannot do this in our own strength. Lord, we come to your word that sounds impossible if we come in the flesh, if we come with our own ability. And so, Lord, break us, mold us, and teach us what it means to strive with your energy. Teach us what it means to deny ourselves. Teach us what it means to take up our cross and to follow you. Lord, my prayer for us as a church is that this will be true of us. In a world where Christianity has become so weak, so mellow, so self-seeking, so, so pleasure-driven, we want to walk in truth, Lord. We want to walk in obedience. We want to be instruments in your hand. And so, Lord, speak to us this morning about this, this idea of showing genuine love. And so, Lord, we thank you that we, we can in your strength. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Philippians 2, verses 19 to 24. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, so that I too may be cheered by news of you. For I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. For they all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know Timothy's proven worth, how, as a son with a father, he has served with me in the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him just as soon as I see how it will go with me, and I trust in the Lord that shortly I myself will come also. So let's walk through this passage again. Paul starts in verse 19 by saying, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, so that, you, so that I too may be cheered by news of you. So right from the beginning in, in chapter 1 verse 1, we see that this letter is from Paul and Timothy. So Paul has been very blessed that even though he's in prison, he's not alone. He's got a very good friend there that's like a son to him, a son in the faith. But he's, a, he's got a desire now to send Timothy off to them. Um, we read on in the last verses in the passage for today that he says, I just need to make sure that my things are settled here and then I'm going to send him on. And this might seem like a great sacrifice from Paul's side. That he's saying, I'm willing to send him. He's good to me here. But I'm willing to send him off. But Paul again is zooming out and he's seeing the bigger picture. He's saying, if I'm willing to give up having Timothy with me, we'll all benefit. I'm going to benefit from it because, like he says, I'm going to be cheered when he comes back and I hear the news from you. He will benefit because, as we'll read now, he has a great love and a care for you. And you will benefit because you will receive him and you'll most probably receive this letter um, with Timothy as he arrives. And you will receive the love and care of Timothy. So that's a good lesson for us as well to remember that often when things are going difficult and it's challenging, 
we, we tend to identify something good in our lives and just cling to it. And we just refuse to let go. And sometimes we have to whoa, step back a bit and see, but maybe I need to share this good thing with other people so that we all can benefit, myself included, but that's not just a selfish benefit that I'm getting out of this. That's what community is about. That's what we are called for as the church to do this. So let's carry on in verse 20. For I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. Timothy is a great example to follow. Um, but sadly, Paul says, you know, there aren't many like him. And I think that's often the frustration with someone who is in church and loves the Lord and, and wants to grow. And, 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 you, and the church is always full of people who do not take it seriously. Church always have people who's just there and they, they're just there, but they're not really there because they actually want to be somewhere else. And Paul says, you know what? There aren't many who, who go out and really take this thing seriously. Now again, this is not an excuse to say, oh well, they're going to be few. So I guess I'm not one of them. I'll just be the normal Christian in the back. No, this should be a challenge to fire you up and say, why am I here at the back? Why am I like all these people who don't take this seriously? Why don't I take my walk with God as seriously as I could? Look at Timothy. He could do it. I could do it as well. You know, in the Christian walk, we're always following. In our Christian walk, we're always following. We're following Jesus, but we're also following the examples of other people. Like Timothy was following the example of Paul in this case. So in your walk with God, you'll always be following. But you need to realize that while you are following, you are also leaving footprints for other people to follow. And so yes, it's important to find good examples to grow in maturity. But also important to realize, I am leaving an example. And what I want people to follow in my example as an example of following Christ, as an example of being a disciple, sold out, Christ at the center of my life. So what, what makes Timothy so unique? What, what is good about him here? And Paul here says that he has genuine concern for their welfare. And genuine concern for your welfare. Now let's unpack that a bit. The word genuine here is unique in the New Testament. It only occurs in this passage in the New Testament. And, and it means general um, real, not fake. And it's actually linked to the idea of natural birth. So, so being born. So it's, it's the picture here of that love that you have for someone who's born of you. And I, I don't know if you have experienced the same thing when you had children. I hope so. And if you haven't had children yet, or um, I hope you've seen it in other people, that that moment your child is born, You've, this is the first time you see this person and you love them. And you love them more than you love most other people on earth. And it's a tremendous deep love. And so this is the picture that Paul uses here of Timothy in regards to the Philippians. He says, Timothy has this genuine love for you. It's actually a play on words because later Paul says, Timothy is like my son. And so the picture here is of saying, we're in a family. We're in a family that really has that deep family love for each other. And that's the love that Timothy has for you. But this genuineness, it's not just a feeling. It's not just looking at my baby and it's so wonderful and I have such deep feelings. You know I have to take this baby home. Then you know I have to care for this baby. And boy, do they need care. And so this is also brought into this picture that he says, he has genuine concern for your welfare. Now the word concern is very interesting. Because the word concern is the same word that's often used in the Bible for anxious. Concern and anxious. And so if we read these things, we realize that this word anxious or concern can be positive or it can be negative. There's a negative type of anxiety. The negative type of anxiety is, an, is, is a type of anxiety that breaks you down. It's a type that, that, that kills your spirit, that pulls you down that makes you want to run away or go sit in a corner. It fills you with fear. It, 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 it makes you flustered. And so that's the type of anxiety that God often says, do not be anxious. But there's also this positive type of anxiety. This, this type of care of like, wow, I have such deep concern for your life that I have to do something about it. So now you have this baby 
that you take home, and I don't know if you were like me, maybe you were better. I look at this child and I say, I am the dad. This child will now depend on me. And now again, negative anxiety will make me drop the baby right there and run out of the front door of the hospital. But a good type of anxiety is saying, I need to do something now. This baby's care is in my hands and I have to act. So positive anxiety brings to forwards actions, good actions, actions of care. Now let's look at some examples of that. Um, say for instance, you are hearing that there are people in stillbite who don't have food to eat. Now negative anxiety is lying awake at night, fearful, wondering what the future holds, and maybe even then going to the place where you're scared, what if this happens to me? What if I also don't have food? And you see that's negative because it doesn't achieve anything except for breaking you down. Now positive anxiety is this idea that oh, there's, there's, there are people that do not have food. And what can I do about it? Who can I feed? Who do I know that do not have food? Where can I show my, my, my love in such a way? In the same way, if there are people in your family who are not saved. And God suddenly impresses on your heart that the time is running out. And the days are few. And these people aren't saved. Now, a negative anxiety is this idea that you get so anxious about it that you don't even want to think about it. If I, if I think about them, it's just too much for me. So I'd rather avoid them than having to deal with it. That's negative anxiety. That's anxiety that pulls you down. Positive anxiety is like, what can I do? And of course, we can't make people saved. That is also a realization. But we can often do more. Often we need to say more. Sometimes we need to say less and do more. Sometimes we need to live the example. Sometimes we need to show love through care. Sometimes we need to show love through taking food. And so yes, this is, this is the positive and negative anxiety. And Timothy has this deep positive concern for their welfare. So let's read there in verse 21. For they all seek their own interests, not those of Christ. So he's contrasting Timothy's life with the rest of most people. And he's saying, you know, the difference in Timothy and other people is that other people seek their own interests. And he's not saying they seek their own interests and not the other people's interests. He's saying the difference is not what he wants and what they want. The difference is looking after yourself or doing what God wants. God's will and it's the interests of God. So Timothy has a real care for them. But most people don't. We've just looked at this a couple of weeks back. Most people are only driven by their own concerns. And so um, there are two types of responses in a pandemic like COVID-19. The first response is, how can I protect me? How can I make sure that I will survive? How do I get what I need and build big walls around me so that it doesn't matter what happens on the outside, at least I'm looked after. Or there's a response to say, there's a pandemic, there's a crisis, there's an economic crisis. How can I fulfill God's interests in these days? And what are God's interests in these days for people to get saved, for people to become worshippers of God? And so St. Timothy has got this on his heart. He is far more concerned about the fact that you are at a place that you are good with God than about his own, own physical concerns. So, um, now here's a big chance. For us. And you have to ask yourself the question. How do I want to spend the last days of my life? Now, last days could be because Jesus is coming soon. Last days could be because you're not going to live much longer. Um, and so, you can be like these people. We just say, well, it's getting more difficult. Um, I'm getting older or I'm getting sicker or I'm getting weaker. So, I'm just going to focus all my energy now on just getting by. Just making sure that my life is good. Or I can be like Timothy and come give my life in absolute concern for other people. Through love, through genuine care, I can take the gospel to other people. And so, one thing we must realize about this love, this genuine care for people, we cannot create it. It's impossible to stand up one day and say, from now on, I'm going to love people with this absolute deep love that I only have for someone that is born of me. You cannot create it. You can only pass it on. This is the type of love that you can only pass on. 
And so how do I get it right to grow in my love for other people? By focusing on God's care for me. God treating me like a a child. I'm adopted into his family. And that love could be directly from God. But it could often also be through other people. How they treated me in, in their love for God. And so this is how you get it right. By passing it on. Focusing on God. Praying, reaching out to God. Seeking his face. And the more you get, the more you are filled, the more you are able to give and pass on to others. And so, if you are not a child of God, you're never going to be able to love people like this. You're going to be able to do good things, but you're never going to have this concern for them above yours. Because that was the example of Jesus. How do I, how do I get to Jesus? Now, if you're not saved, if you're lost, um, this is where you come before God and you say, God, I am selfish. I am living for myself. I am concerned about my own welfare. And the Holy Spirit is prodding in my heart that, you know, the end is going to come. Judgment is waiting. And it doesn't care how well I looked after myself on this earth. Because none of that is going to go with me. If you reach that point where you say, I'm a sinner. I'm guilty. I deserve to go there. Then the good news is that I can turn to God and say, God, thank you. Thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross, to pay this price that I could never pay. That you paid the price for justification. And in that, you you turn your back on your old life. You ask forgiveness for who you were. And you give it all to God. You know what? The world is running after everything. And they're giving themselves to everything. They're giving themselves to money. They're giving themselves to pleasure. They're giving themselves to security. And that is so empty. So... It's not a new thing to give all to God. It's just a change of focus to saying these things are useless in giving me lasting comfort. God, I'm going to give it all to you. And when you do that, when you come and you bring it all and and you believe that God is God and that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and you accept him and you follow him, you become his child. And in that moment, the Spirit comes and lives in you. And the more I let the Spirit fill me, the more I'm able to pass on this type of love to others. So here's the challenge for us. Firstly, dwell with God. Walk with God. Don't be an empty vessel trying to feed those around you. You're going to wear yourself out. You're going to be stressed, anxious, negative anxious. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be angry. You're going to be frustrated because you're living empty. Go to God. Let Him fill you. And He'll fill you so much that you'll have more than enough to give. So that's the first thing. But the second thing, and here's our homework, our challenge for this week. Where can I then go and show genuine concern? And for some of you, you will already know. There's someone very close to you that have lost their job. um, And you can help them. And there's someone close to you who is old and sickly and can't look after themselves. Then you can care there. And just a short note, we can't go into this detail, but also pray for the wisdom on how to help. There are chances in these days, there are corrupt people who use this pandemic to enrich themselves. God says if you don't want to work, you don't get paid. So pray for the wisdom to see someone who really needs help. Someone who is not lazy and is not conniving and is not scheming. Someone who's really down and out. And this is your opportunity to come into their lives and show this genuine concern. And your genuine concern is very, very seldom a once-off thing. Once of giving them something and going away. Genuine concern is like Timothy. Going to someone, getting in their space, getting in their lives, learning learning about them and helping them really, showing proper, genuine care for them. Um, This is our challenge. If these are the last days, And things are going to get worse and worse and worse. This is how we will reach people. If famines increase and economic trouble increase and wars increase and strife increase and all these things are increasing, people are going to lose hope in the things that have given them hope the last 50 years. And we need to be there ready to show the love of God, to show the care. So again, don't go and do that on empty. You're going to fail. Be filled. If there are times when God keeps you at home, it's times where He's busy filling you. 
Be filled so that when the chances come where you can care, care. And so, like I said, if you don't know who to care for, you can't think of anyone who's really needing help at this time, go to the Lord in prayer and say, God, I need you to clearly place someone on my mind and on my heart that needs help at this time. And then go show genuine care. Let's pray together. Yes, Father, we thank you that you've showed us this love first. There is no greater love than someone who came innocent, without fault, and was willing to give his life for us. And Lord, you didn't just stop by and do it. You came and you lived with us. You experienced life like we did. You cared on so many levels. You cared when people were hungry. You cared when people were sick. You cared when people were destitute. You cared when people were ostracized. And Lord, thank you for that wonderful example you've given us on how we can be your hands and feet into this world. And so Lord, help us to stay with you. Help us daily to be on our knees before you in prayer. Daily be in your word, hearing your voice. Lord, make us alive in you so that this genuine care comes naturally. Oh Lord, it is such a shame that Paul had to say that there are so few Christians who are really like this. And Lord, my prayer for our church is that we will have many that you will rise up more and more people in our church who live like this, where they get their fullness from you and then live it out constantly, continually to those around them. Lord, only in your strength and only in your power. We pray all of this in your wonderful name. Amen. Make my life a prayer to you I want to do what you want me to no empty words and no white lies, no token prayers, no compromise.